You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa delivered a speech during the winner's announcement ceremony of the King Hamad Award for Youth Empowerment to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals in its third edition. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Innahu la min dawa'i sururina an nashhad ma'akum. Khitam a'mal al-nisqa al-thalitha. Min jaizatina hadha. والإعلان عن الفائزين بها التي نعتبرها رسالة تقدير واعتزاز من مملكة البحرين لشباب العالم من أصحاب المبادرات والإنجازات الذين يلتزمون ويبدعون في تقديم الحلول المؤثرة والمستدامة ليعم عالمنا الاستقرار والسلام ولتحظى شعوب بالأمن والرخاء وبالنظر إلى ما تمر به مجتمعاتنا في الفترة الأخيرة وهي تتصدى لأزمة صحية مستجدة فرضت العديد من المتغيرات وجاءت بالمزيد من التحديات فإنه يصبح من الضروري أن يتاح أمام الشباب المزيد من الفرص العملية والمعرفية ليتمكنوا من الإسهام في تطوير الشأن التنموي وبأساليب مبتكرة تسرع من تحقيق الأجندة العالمية للتنمية المستدامة ونود هنا أن نعرب عن اعتزازنا العميق لما تبذله كوادرنا البحرينية الشابة من جهود متواصلة وبخطوات واثقة نتابعها وبكل اهتمام تعزيزا لريادة تجربتنا الشبابية الوطنية لترتقي بنتائج عملها ولتستمر في تحقيق إنجازاتها بمهنية عالية وبتنافسية عالمية ونقدر في هذا الصدد المتابعة الحثيثة والسعي المخلص للابن العزيز سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة بمثلنا للأعمال الإنسانية وشؤون الشباب الذي يقدم كل ما يلزم من أجل نهضة شبابية قادرة على التواصل مع العالم بلغة العصر وروح التجديد وبالعمل على ما يوحد جهودهم لتكوين قوة واعية بواجباتها وقادرة على البناء وقيادة الأوطان وختاما نتقدم بتهانينا الخالصة للفائزين بالجائزة ونشكرهم على اهتمامه بالمشاركة فيها بمشروعاتهم ومبادراتهم المتميزة والتي نأمل أن تجد طريق التنفيذ للبناء على مكتسباتنا التنموية وخصوصا في مثل هذه الأوقات الصعبة مقدرين كذلك الجهود الطيبة لطاقم العمل بوزارة شؤون الشباب والرياضة وكافة اللجان والشركاء المساندين لأعمال الجائزة تحقيقا لأهدافها المرجوة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser, also delivered a speech on the occasion. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yatib li an arfa ila maqam Sayyidi Hadrat Sahib al-Jalalah al-Malik Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa ahl al-Bilad al-Mufadda hafadhahu Allah wa ra'ah asma ayat al-Shukr wa al-Taqdir ala da'am Jalalatah ayyadahu Allah al-La Mahdud lil-Shabab al-Bahraini wal-Alami انطلاقا من رؤية جلالته الشمولية والمستقبلية لتمكين الشباب ومشاركتهم في تحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة 
التي أقرتها الأمم المتحدة دائما ما يؤكد جلالته على أن الشباب البحريني مصدر ثرائنا ورهاننا المضمون وأن مسألة تمكين الشباب أولوية وطنية لتحفيز مشاركتهم الفعالة كقوة عمل وبناء ونحن بدورنا ننقل رؤية جلالة الملك لتتخطى الواقع المحلي لتصل إلى جميع شباب العالم ونسعى إلى صناعة الأمن لهم انطلاقا من كون مملكة البحرين التي كانت ولا زالت المكان المفضل وأرض الفرص للشباب أصرت مملكة البحرين على مواصلة جائزة الملك حمد لتمكين الشباب لتحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة في نسختها الثالثة رقم التحديات الكبيرة التي فرضتها جائحة كورونا وأسرارنا نابع من توجيهات جلالة الملك بتخطي جميع التحديات التي فرضتها الجائحة وذلك في سبيل رفعة الشباب وتأكيد مكانتهم وعقدنا العزم على تحويل تلك التحديات إلى نقاط انطلاقة جديدة لرؤية الإبداع والابتكار إنما يميز نسخة هذا العام من جائزة الملك حمد لتمكين الشباب لتحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة هو إضافة أبعاد جديدة تطلبت منا توجيه الشباب للتفكير والمراجعة بطريقة إبداعية وتجعل من الشباب يفكرون خارج الصندوق للعمل على إيجاد الحلول لتنفيذ الأهداف الأممية وتطبيق المبادرات والمشاريع الشبابية التي تعالج الأهداف التي تضررت من جائحة كورونا الأمر الذي يضيف بعدا جديدا للجائزة باعتبارها الجائزة الأولى عالميا التي تدفع الشباب لمعالجة التحديات التي فرضتها جائحة كورونا على قطاعات التنمية المستدامة نفخر بما وصلت إليه جائزة الملك حمد من انتشار واسع في مختلف أرجاء العالم وهو الأمر الذي تمثل في تحقيق النسخة الثالثة من الجائزة لمشاركة كبيرة من قبل الشباب والمؤسسات العامة والخاصة والمنظمات الأهلية بما يفوق السنوات الماضية بشكل كبير تحملت مملكة البحرين ولله الحمد مسؤولياتها الدولية تجاه تنفيذ أهداف التنمية المستدامة وقامت بإشراك الشباب البحريني والعالمي متخذين من نهج جلالة الملك المفدى نبراسا لجعل البحرين عاصمة الشباب والرياضة وتعزيز فرص البيئة التنافسية العادلة المفتوحة بين الأوساط الشبابية للتسابق من أجل بناء عالم أكثر رفاهية للشعوب وينعم بخيرات التنمية شكرا سيدي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته في تحقيق النجاح الكبير لجائزة الملك حمد لتمكين الشباب لتحقيق The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs Ayman Al-Mu'ayyad also delivered a speech in which he attributed the success of the award to the interest of his mad speaking Hamad bin Isa Al-Khalifa He underscored the efforts of the kingdom in supporting the international community to celebrate the youth around the world and provide them with opportunities to present initiatives that encourage them to move forward He also expressed thanks to the representative of his mad speaking the king for humanitarian work and youth affairs His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al-Khalifa for his support for the youth and sports ministry and the youth of Bahrain and the world, as well as his continuous follow-up of the award, which reflects his keen interest in empowering the youth around the world. He added that this also reflects the Kingdom's support of the United Nations' efforts in providing the youth with opportunities to achieve the goals of sustainable development. He reiterated thanks to His Majesty the King for supporting the youth around the world. The resident representative of the United Nations Development Program in Bahrain, Stefano Petinato, also delivered a speech on the occasion. He stated that the UNDP in Bahrain has been working hand-in-hand hand since 1978 with governmental entities and other active institutions to achieve national goals and international commitments, including the goals of sustainable development. He stated that the King Hamad Award for Youth Empowerment to achieve the sustainable development goals is a primary example of the partnerships under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He noted that the UNDP has also been working with the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs since 2017 to design and develop the award which continues to grow every year. Petinato stated that this year's edition has reached more than 100 countries and has received more than 4,000 applications at an increase of 14% compared to the previous edition. He concluded by expressing the UNDP's keenness on bolstering cooperation with Bahrain. During the ceremony, the names of the winners of the third King Hamad Award for Youth Empowerment to Achieve Sustainable Development Goals were announced. The two categories of the award are the contribution of the youth to achieving the goals of sustainable development, and the second category is the empowerment of youth, their measures and impact in achieving the goals of sustainable sustainable development.
Bahrain International Channel will broadcast a full-length video on the winner's announcement ceremony of the King Hamid Award for Youth Empowerment to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals right after this bulletin. His Royal the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, issued Edict Number 22 for this year of 2020, restructuring the National Committee on the Prohibition of Development, Production, Stockpiling and Use of Chemical Weapons and their Destruction. The committee will be chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and will include members representing the following authorities for a term of three renewable years. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Bahrain Defense Force, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication, the General Directorate of Criminal Investigations and Forensic Evidence of the Ministry of Interior, Customs Affairs at the Ministry of Interior, the General Directorate for Civil Defense at the Ministry of Interior, Electricity and Water Affairs, the National Oil and Gas Authority, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, the Supreme Council for the Environment and the University of Bahrain. The committee will select a Vice President from among its members at its first meeting who will exercise the authority of the President in the event of the President's absence. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a letter addressed to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. The letter was delivered to His Royal Highness during a meeting with the envoy of His Highness the Emir of Kuwait and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Nasser Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah at Rafah Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness noted that strong bilateral ties continue to grow with the support of His Majesty the King and His Highness the Emir of Kuwait. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of advancing bilateral cooperation in order to realize further prosperity for both countries and their people. The Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, were also in attendance. The personal representative of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the Kingdom has played a prominent role in bolstering cooperation and exchanging expertise in the field of preserving wildlife and biodiversity with the brotherly states of the Gulf Cooperation Council. On the occasion of the Gulf Wildlife Day, which is held under the theme Humans and the Wildlife Partners in One Environment, His Highness affirmed that the Kingdom is keen on supporting all environmental causes, particularly those concerning biodiversity, for their importance in achieving the goals of sustainable development. Development. He noted that the 30th of December, which has been allocated annually to celebrate the wildlife by GCC states, aims at spreading awareness on the importance of preserving wildlife among citizens and residents. His Highness noted that the Supreme Council for Environment has made clear progress in conducting bilateral discussions with officials from the GCC, in addition to organizing a number of field visits to wildlife reserves and research centers in GCC countries. His Highness noted that the natural reserves of the Kingdom reflect the attention of Bahrain to achieving a natural balance between man and wildlife. He noted that the Heritage Revival Projects has attracted citizens and tourists to practice marine and heritage sports and raise the level of seagoers' awareness of the National Raja Natural Reserves and their great importance to protecting wildlife. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, received special envoy of the President of the Philippines, Presidential Assistant on Foreign Affairs and Chief of Presidential Protocol, Robert Eric Broche, and Foreign Ministry Undersecretary Sarah Lou Arola. The special envoy conveyed a written letter from President Rodrigo Duterte, including his condolences on the passing of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, recalling in the letter the prominent and pivotal role of the deceased in promoting the strengthening Bahraini Filipino relations in various fields. He stressed that the deceased was an exceptional leader who devoted his life to serving his country and humanity. The Deputy Prime Minister expressed his thanks and appreciation to the President for his good feelings by offering condolences which reflect the distinguished relations between Bahrain and the Philippines. He wished the Philippines further progress and prosperity. Under the patronage of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and coinciding with the Kingdom celebrations of the National Day and the commemoration of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne, the Fatma Al Houthi Mosque was opened today in Mharag after being reconstructed by the Council. Present was the Chairman of the Sunni Endowments, Sheikh 
Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri, and the Secretary General of the SCIA, Khalid bin Abdullah Shomali, as well as a number of officials from both councils. Al Hajri and Al Shomali inspected the mosque and its facilities, then a Dhuhr prayer was held in the presence of a number of officials and families. On this occasion, Al Shomali expressed pleasure in completing of the project. He valued the Kingdom's keenness on supporting and maintaining mosques under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He affirmed that the SCIA is keen on servicing and supporting mosques and expressed pride in the Council's achievements over the years. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, witnessed the conclusion of the Coast Guard's joint training drill along with the Chief of Public Security, Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, and the Coast Guard Commander, Major General Ala Siadi. A number of directorates of the Ministry of Interior participated in the drill as per the Minister's directives with the objective of raising their level of readiness to ensure marine safety and security. The Minister reviewed the efforts of the Preparation Committee and ways in which various scenarios would be handled in accordance with security and legal guidelines. He praised the level of security readiness and maintaining it at high levels and expressed thanks and appreciation to the Coast Guard and all participants. The Minister said that the joint drill reflects real-life scenarios of seaborne threats which require strength and the use of the latest technology. He expressed appreciation for the role of the Coast Guard in protecting the fishermen while affirming that they should be supported in light of the Qatari Authority's hostile practices. For his part, the Coast Guard commander expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister for his ongoing support and affirmed the, the joint drill to raise the level of readiness in the field of marine security. The capital governor, Hisham bin Abdurrahman al-Khalifa, condemned the falsehood that had been aired on Al-Jazeera on the practices of the police directorate of Muharraq. He affirmed that the people are firmly behind the leadership of His Majesty the King and that they reject these false allegations, which are intended to promote terrorism and violence. He praised the efforts of the police in general and those of Muharraq in particular in light of the directives of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa. The governor affirmed the police has a long history of being law-abiding and respectful of human rights and that its officers are a part of a Bahraini society's Arab and social fabric which values the human life and dignity. He praised the Ministry of Interior's initiatives that have kept it in contact with the society on the principal partnership with society, which made it a model to be emulated and has added to the achievements of the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty the King. For his part, the northern governor Ali Al-Asfur affirmed the deep-rooted nature of Bahrain's humanitarian course under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al-Khalifa. He expressed appreciation for the efforts of the Ministry of Interior in ensuring stability and security and praised the efforts of the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa. He said that the people of the governorate have condemned the false information that Al Jazeera has aired on the practices of the police directorate of the Mahara governorate, which he said is carried out with utmost professionalism. The governor said that Parag is a symbol of Bahraini identity and that its people are patriotic. He affirmed that the Qatari television station has aired falsehood that are intended to encourage terrorism and violence, while maintaining that this does not reflect the will of the people of Qatar, who are a part of the GCC family. He concluded by saying that the kingdom's achievements, along with the unity and loyalty of the people of Bahrain, are evident to all, and that the people of the government are appreciative of the steps that have been taken to assist the Bahraini fishermen. The Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed al Saleh, urged full compliance with mandatory precautionary measures and protocols set by the National Task Force for Combating COVID-19, stressing the key and responsible role of each individual in protecting society and curbing the spread of the pandemic. She valued the keenness of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the safety and health of citizens and residents. She commended the national efforts led by His Royal Highness to combat the pandemic, stressed the necessity of showing commitment and responsibility in light of current developments in certain countries. She said that the ministry and other relevant authorities continue their precautionary measures to limit the spread of the virus and prepare in compliance with precautionary plans to ensure health security and deal with the pandemic. She called on all citizens and residents to abide by guidelines and health protocols to prevent the virus from spreading, stressing the necessity of avoiding contacts outside the family circle and gatherings that exceed tolerated numbers, especially during the New Year festivities. The Cassation Court President and Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council, Chancellor Abdullah bin Hassan al buainin issued a decision to appoint the second and eighth lower criminal courts to look into cases that of breaching coronavirus precautions, including conducting gatherings above the permitted limit. He said that the court would deal with such cases within 24 hours across the week, including weekends and the New Year's holiday. The Chancellor affirmed the team Bahrain's decision, as well as those of the Cabinet, are intended to contain the pandemic and added that this decision is intended to safeguard the health and security of all. He 
He added that Bahrain's courts have succeeded in carrying out their services since the onset of the pandemic thanks to the decisions of the Executive Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He affirmed that the ongoing investment in the information and technological infrastructure of the kingdom made the work of the courts easier. In coordination with the Supreme Legal Council, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments and the Public Prosecution. The National Medical Task Force for Combating Coronavirus held a press conference today at the Crown Prince Center for Training and Medical Research at the BDF Hospital, where the latest developments on coronavirus were discussed. The Undersecretary at the Ministry of Health and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, Dr. Walid al Mana, affirmed the importance of avoiding social gatherings on the New Year holiday in order to avoid an increase in coronavirus cases among citizens and residents. He said that the vaccination campaign is ongoing and that stocks of the vaccines that were originally ordered from various companies in August amount to over a million. And Mana said that in December, testing increased by 1.5%, which increased it to an average of 2.4%, and that daily coronavirus cases have increased during the period of December the 24th to the 28th by 34% when compared to the first three weeks of the month. He warned against leniency in applying precautionary measures and its possible effects. And Mana then said that the medical capacity now amounts to 6,078 beds, 540 of which are in use, and that the number of optional home quarantine cases amount to 1,000 1,474, all of which are without symptoms, and that the number of recoveries amount to 97.43%, while fatalities amount to 0.38%. For his part, the infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BDF and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, affirmed the importance of avoiding social gatherings during the New Year holiday. He said that 39% of the current cases were carried over from family members during December. He affirmed that vaccination is ongoing on the basis of appointments and the remaining stocks until new shipments arrive. For her part, the consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, Dr. Jamila Salman, said that following the precautions is key, especially during the New Year holiday. She added that the vaccination process is ongoing and that its effects varies from person to person. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,014 active cases with 161 recoveries, 234 registered new cases and one new death. 122 of the new registered cases were expatriates, 96 were contacts of active cases and 16 were travel related. The deceased was a 69-year-old male citizen. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus. The Nasser Vocational Training Centre received the Member of Parliament for Gillenheim and Rheinheim and the United Kingdom's former Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion or Belief, Rahman Chisti. In the presence of the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. During His Excellency's visit to the centre, MP Chisti emphasised the great efforts practised in qualifying young students and preparing them for different work fields and forces in the presence of diverse academic and technological tools and facilities.